Hi, welcome back. Today my video is going to cover have to versus get to. We're going to dig a little into what a mindset is and what attitude means and then we're going to bring it back around to living life in a have to mindset or living life in a get to mindset. I'm Kathy. I abused drugs and alcohol for over 20 years and for the past 20 years I've been sober learning to recover myself. I read a lot, I attend recovery support meetings, I'm still sober and I'm very happy in my life. Most of the time it goes really well and I believe that's because of the way that I practice a program of recovery. So I decided to share some of my experiences with you and hope that you find some value in this and you get something out of it. So thanks for showing up, thanks for joining me. Mindset. So first we talk about have to. What does have to mean? Have to means that you are forced to do it or you need to do it for a purpose or a reason. You have to. I have to go to work. That's usually followed by uh, groaning, right? Then there's the other side of it, which is I get to. And get to is something I'm able to do, something I'm excited about. And I'm going to say that when I, when I change my mindset to get to, joy comes from that. And when I seek joy, when I go to a place of being excited about something, knowing that I'm able to do it and wanting to do it, happiness follows. Happiness is a byproduct of finding joy in life. So I have to go to work or I get to go to work. And there's not a lot of people I know who get excited about going to work. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but they don't matter here. So let's get into what a mindset is. A mindset is how you see the world around you. There is a fixed mindset, and a fixed mindset or a growth mindset is a way of thinking about your own intelligence and your abilities. A fixed mindset is when you view your intelligence and abilities as innate and unchangeable. They're fixed. It's never going to change. I'm always going to be like this. Whereas a growth mindset is viewing your life as being th improved through effort, learning, and persistence. It means that with time and effort, I can get better at this. Now, I suck at it right now. For example, making videos on YouTube. There's so many things to learn, and I'm nervous about this. But I believe that I can do it, and I believe that it will get better and better. And in order to prove that to myself, I have to have persistence. I have to learn how to do these different things. And I just have to keep doing it. I have to keep practicing. And frankly, for a lot of areas in life, if you practice something long enough, you get better at it. For example, riding a bike. Uh, when you were little, most of you didn't know how to ride a bike. And someone taught you how. And you probably fell down a lot. I fell down a lot. And eventually, I learned how to keep my balance, much like we do in life. And then I learned how to race, and then I learned how to jump things, and skid to a halt, and then I learned how to ride with no hands. And I did all those things through trial and error and practice. I didn't believe that I couldn't do it, so I did it. That's a growth mindset. So with time and effort, I can get better at this thing, right? And in that, think of the happiness that I got, that you got, when you learned how to ride a bicycle for the first time, and you looked behind you and nobody was holding on, and you didn't have training wheels. You learned how to do that, and, and it brought joy, right? Remember that feeling of joy, and joy leads to happiness. I'm super happy I learned how to ride a bike. I thought I was quite the thing when I learned how to ride with no hands. Um, so fixed mindset, I can't ride a bike. I'm never going to be able to ride a bike. I'm not even going to try. And growth mindset, uh, riding a bike is really hard to learn. But once I got it, it's as if I'd never not known how. And then we go to attitude. And attitude on the internet says uh, how you interact with the world according to how you see things. Well, if we talk about mindset as how we see things, then the attitude is the way that I interact with the world based on the way that I see things. And attitudes can be negative or they can be positive. And that varies. Some days my attitude is negative. Most days my attitude is positive. Throughout the day, that can change. Some examples of negative attitude is um, everything sucks. 
It just sucks. The world sucks. Politics suck. Going to work sucks. Oh my God, my marriage sucks. Having kids sucks. Whatever the everything is, and we can apply that to everything, um, or nothing ever works out for me. Why don't you try that new thing? No, because you know what? Nothing ever works out for me. I'm just not going to make the effort. Um, and another one I've heard is life's not fair. And these are all very absolute black and white ideas. Negative thinking typically is black and white thinking. It's either is or it isn't, and it's just not worth it. Positive attitude, the way that we interact with the world, is maybe I smile at strangers. Maybe I help someone by holding the door. Maybe I, I don't know, reach something on a high shelf in the grocery store for that tiny little old lady who can't straighten up her back anymore. I've done that. Um, so the positive attitude is sometimes things suck, but it doesn't last. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. It's a flexible mindset. It's not rigid. It's not absolute. It's not forever that thing, right? So then we get back to, now we know mindset is how you see the world around you. An attitude, how you interact with the world according to how you see the things around you. And we get back to have to and get to. And I'm going to apply it to sobriety and recovery because there was the before when I wasn't sober and there's the now where I am sober. And again, this isn't a 24-7. Everything's fucking awesome all the time. But, you know, 90% of the time, I can hang, hang out in the get to and the positive. So these are some examples that I wrote down as to where it was have to and now it's get to. Um, one, the first thing in sobriety is going to a support meeting. <laughs> I used to drag myself to those things. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to hang out with you people, the sober people. I didn't want to admit that I had a problem and I needed to hang out with other people who appeared to have a problem and maybe did something about it. I had to. I had to go. I have to. When I first got sober, I showed up on a court card. I had to go. That was that was definitely I had to. But I had a choice. You know, my two options were go to prison or go to some meetings and learn not to smoke or drink. So I did make a choice. At the time, it didn't feel like a choice, but it was. I could have gone to prison. That was a choice. I didn't like that choice, so I had to go to the meetings. Um, nowadays, when I go to a meeting, it's because I get to, because I'm excited about it, because every time I go, I learn something new about the disease of my mind, the reaction that my body has about how to live life like other people live it. I want to live life successfully for me. I want to feel good. I also want to feel good about myself. I want to feel good physically. I want to feel good mentally. I want to have good relationships, loving relationships, caring relationships, real relationships. I don't want relationships anymore that are fake. And by fake, it means I'm pretending to be somebody I'm not so that I can have friends. I get to. Uh, working with a mentor in a recovery support group uh, it used to be a have to. Work that we do to learn about our old behaviors and how to change them into new behaviors. So we're replacing a negative behavior with a positive behavior. That takes work. It means writing stuff down. It means being honest with myself. And it was absolutely a have to. Um, I didn't feel like I got to do anything. I didn't want to learn about what a, what a terrible person that I was before. Because I didn't think I was till I cleared my mind and got sober and looked back on my life and its behaviors. Um, so those are kind of recovery-based things. And then there's life things. It used to be I have to go to work. I mentioned that earlier. Today, I get to go to work. And people might be like, we get to go to work. Nobody gets to go to work. you got to go to work because you've got to pay bills. Well, I do. But I'm sober today. I'll tell you, I had 18 jobs in about 16 months one year. Well, that's a little more than a year. Um, I don't know why people kept hiring me. But I couldn't live paycheck to paycheck because I wasn't getting paycheck to paycheck. I was like every other paycheck, maybe every third paycheck. I couldn't pay my bills. I, I had notices to shut off my electricity, my phone. And, you know, I didn't get to pay my bills. And I really didn't have to pay my bills. Um, I just didn't have to have a phone or electricity or groceries or gasoline. Of course, I had to have a car for that. Well, I think I did have a car. It was just a beater car. Um, today, I get to service the car. Because I have a job. Today I get to be a friend. And have to versus get to. 
well, I have to stay sober in order to be a friend, in order to get to be a friend. But I get to be sober today. I love waking up, remembering what I did the day before, not having a hangover, not having wreckage to clean up, like what lies did I tell or who did I hit on who I probably shouldn't have. I got to change my behavior. Now, you'd think have to. We have to change our behavior. We don't have to. We get to change our behavior because we chose sobriety. Um, I get to visit the doctor and the dentist, the hairstylist. I have the same person cutting my hair every time. I have the same doctor, have for years. I do have a new dentist, but we moved into a new area. But that previous dentist I had for 15 years. Before I got sober, I never had the same doctor or the same dentist consecutively. You know, I get to watch grandkids today because my children want me to. They want me around. And and that's a great feeling. I, I've heard a lot of people who are old, older like me and have grandchildren saying, oh, I have to watch the grandkids today. No, you don't. But since you've chosen to, maybe change your attitude about it because the kids are going to feel that. So there's this have-to mode of mindset. It's ho-hum, it's woe is me, or there is a get-to. I get to do these things today. I'm alive. There are a few instances in my life where I'm pretty sure I shouldn't be. And today I'm grateful that I have a clear mind, that I have a group of people I trust and love, that my family and my friends are interested in having a relationship with me. It, it's really kind of awesome. So I guess the end of this video is this question you ask yourself. You don't have to answer me. You just answer you. Are you living a have-to life or are you living a get-to life? Because it matters. See, the one cool thing about life is that we each get to decide. We have free will. I get to make all my choices and I get to live with all the consequences. And sometimes the consequences are good and positive. Like if I put money in the bank every month, a year from now, I have more money. That's my choice. I could also choose to go to the casinos near my house and drop 50 bucks every month or more, and I don't, I don't have that money. And maybe I have less, and maybe I don't get to pay my phone bill. <laughs> it's a choice. You get to live how you want to. We get to decide that, each of us. You get to choose. So choose. Do you want a have-to life or a get-to life? Make good choices. Thanks for watching. Please like this video if you liked it, and please leave a comment if you have any. Thank you.